it looked like somebody was bent over and had their head in the window of the deer blind. It either heard me or smelt me, and he pulled his head out of the tent and stood straight up, and that that shocked me. They don't make people that that big. The way it moved, almost as if it was gliding across the beach. I've never seen anything move like that in my life. They were screaming at each other in gibberish. It sounded like a language and they were chuntering away back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards. I know what a bear looks like and there is no way on this planet that what I saw were bears. I'm Robert Edgington from Northwest Indiana, and you're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. You know, a lot of the comments I've been getting lately regarding the show, people say, uh, Wes, why do you talk about the weird stuff? Can't we just talk about Bigfoot? Why don't you start calling your show The Paranormal Chronicles instead of Sasquatch Chronicles? And I understand where people are coming from to a certain point, but my answer is very simple. I'm looking for the truth, no matter where that takes me or how uncomfortable it is. A lot of these self-proclaimed experts will tell you you can't solve one mystery with another mystery. That's true. My response back would be, nor can you pick and choose from a mystery to fit your agenda or beliefs. Most of you know Timothy Renner from the podcast Strange Familiars. I've had him on the show many times. And Tim and Joshua Cutchins wrote a book, uh, Where the Footprints Ends. It's High Strangeness and the Bigfoot Phenomenon. And... Before Tim started writing this book, he was talking to me about writing this book and what I thought, uh, my thoughts on it. And I said, you know, Tim, I would start with the Ape Canyon story. Go back and read what Fred Beck wrote. There's more to that story than what the Bigfoot world tells you. And I've been guilty of this, too. There's way more to that story when you read what Fred wrote. And so I have an upcoming show with Tim. And it's interesting when I talk to a lot of people, they'll say, uh, there's a long history of Sasquatch just being an, a normal animal. Look at the Ape Canyon story. A bunch of apes attacked these miners in this cabin. That's true, that did happen. But there's a little bit more to the story no one ever addresses. Here's a clip from my interview with Tim. Fred Beck, he was one of the miners that was there. You know, everyone who's into Sasquatch has heard of Ape Canyon, I think. You know, a lot of people have uh, read about it. If you buy a you know a book that's a general survey of Bigfoot, it'll usually have some mention of the Ape Canyon story in it. And every Bigfoot book I've ever read makes it sound like a, a guy shot at a Bigfoot and then a bunch of Bigfoot came back later that night and attacked the cabin and that was pretty much it. But Fred Beck was one of the miners who was there. And he has a far stranger story to tell. And I have a quote from him in the book, which I absolutely love. And he says, first of all, I will say that they are not entirely of this world. By they, he meant the the Bigfoot. I know the reaction we experienced as these beings attacked our cabin impressed many with the concept of great ape-like men dwelling in the mountains. And I can say that we genuinely fought and were quite fearful and we were glad to get out of the mountains. But I was, for one, always conscious that we were dealing with supernatural beings. And I know the other members of the party felt the same. So there's a lot of 
what Josh and I have begun to call weird washing in the Bigfoot community, where they take these stories and they cherry pick the parts that make them seem most like natural animals, like apes in the woods, and they throw out all the weirdness. So with respect to Ape Canyon, it started when these guys saw a giant, what they called a, a giant Indian spirit, a Native American spirit, which told them to follow a white arrow through the wilderness. They follow this white arrow. Along the way, they meet another spirit, a woman who they called Vander White. They don't describe her, but they said she was, you know, they, they named her Vander White. And then they follow this arrow onto the mine, which they named the Vander White Mine. They named it after this this female spirit they met. While they're there, before any of the, the stuff that you know everybody knows about with the shooting the, the Bigfoot and the attack later on, they experience a number of weird things, including strange sounds coming from the ground, like a rhythmic kind of drumming. Uh, they find two footprints in the middle of the sandbar. They said it's just an acre wide sandbar. And there's just two footprints down the middle. They could not figure out how the, the footprints got there. Uh, the One of the other miners, not Fred Beck, but one of the ones that was with him said it looked like they picked something up and dropped it down and picked it up again. Um, there was uh, an up and a port. So these happen in poltergeist experiences. Things just appear or disappear. But uh, he had a, a pencil appear in his hand. He said he knew it was at his house. He needed a pencil and a pencil appeared in his hand out of nowhere. So there's all this strangeness that, that goes along with this case that's just been washed away and, and you never hear about it. Uh, I know when we were talking before, Wes, you, you said, you know, that's one of the first things you brought up when I, you know, I was talking about this book. You're like, have you read Fred Beck's Ape Canyon account? I was like, yes, I have. Absolutely. So what is the truth and how much of it do you want to hear? You know, a while back, a listener had contacted me and said, you know, I listen to all these YouTube channels where these these people do these retelling of, of people's encounters. And there's a great one. He even sent me a link and said, hey, you should contact the, the creator of this account and, and see if you can get the, the witness to come on your show. So I did. Come to find out, they're all fake stories. These people sit around, write stories, and then put them up on YouTube and say, oh, this is a retelling of someone's encounter. Do you ever notice they never bring on a witness? They never bring anyone forward. It's always some lady or some guy retelling the stories. So what is the truth? And what is it that you want to hear? You know, I'm reminded of the the Two Brothers episode I did. Um, And as I was talking to them, they constantly would talk about this woman in white and I would brush it off. I wanted to hear about Sasquatch. I didn't want to hear about a woman in white. And they thought it was a homeless woman. And, for, and they kept trying to tell me about this woman, and I would always change the subject or move on to, let's get back to Bigfoot. You know, this woman in white has been showing up since the beginning of time. People talk about this weird uh, woman in white that shows up. Sometimes it's important to look into other genres or other subjects because you might pick up little crumbs, little nuggets of information that are useful and that you might be able to apply to the mystery you're trying to solve. Maybe those little crumbs of information are worthless, but why not stop and listen? But this woman in white chapter, this started with, uh, it's the we need help episode that I think uh, myself and and the fans usually just call the two brothers episode. And, uh, you know, they were seeing a number of of, uh, Bigfoot creatures and having the, the very typical stuff with you know bigfoot slap in the house and climbing on the roof and doing all that but then uh, you gave an update on a later episode and you see you know they're seeing this really weird woman this like hag like woman who's walking around the neighborhood she's tall and she's wearing white and she's wearing shoes that are too big look like they're too big for her feet which is a very important detail by the way we'll get into that and uh, some people in the sasquatch chronicles uh, the forum started saying, oh, you know what? I've I've seen a weird woman in white and I drove down the road and I, I saw a Bigfoot then. And I thought, well, okay, that's weird. Now that more than one person is reporting this. So I started just on my own kind of keeping track and I met with a, a witness. Uh, I, think, I think I mentioned it on Strange Familiars once that I was kind of interested in this idea. And uh, a, a Bigfoot witness said, hey, I'd like to meet you at Michaud Forest where I had you know, a couple encounters and I want to show you something there. I said, absolutely. So we met there as a forest here in Pennsylvania and 
he takes me to a place called Pond Bank. And he says, the reason I'm taking this, he said, we're less than a mile away from, he had two sightings, Once he, one he got roared at, and another he saw a black uh, Bigfoot, one of the Blacker Than Black accounts. He said, it was the, you know, uh, I'm sure you've taken reports of them, Wes, where people just say they look blacker than black, blacker yeah. than the night around them. Yeah. Yeah, like the, uh, almost like they suck up the light. Yeah. That's what we're talking yeah. about, yeah. Yep. So it, it was one of those, and, and they were both less than a mile away from this area in Pond Bank. He said, now this area is famous for, there's a woman in white spirit here. They call her the White Lady of Pond Bank. So then I said, oh, okay, now this is very interesting. I'm getting several cases now. But I started going back in folklore then, and I'll just take a moment to say, I say this in most every interview, I think it's important. I've heard a lot of the cryptozoologists, the, the self-anointed cryptozoologists, use the term folklore in a very dismissive way. They'll say like, oh, that's just folklore. Like it like, leaves a bad taste in their mouth. And I think that's a mistake. Um, I think there's a lot of truth that's passed down through the folk process. For instance, you know, the easiest example is like this plant will heal you and this plant will kill you. You know, these are things that have been passed down in folk tales and folk stories over the years. And I think these folk stories, they get exaggerated, they get changed a little bit, but the essential truth is still there. And what it is, it's it's our relatives, our, you know, from the past, our ancestors telling us how they dealt with these weird things a lot of the times. And a lot of these things are very important because you can learn a lot of lessons from from the way our relatives dealt with with the things that were like bigfoot which they wouldn't have called bigfoot they would have called them wild men or before that they would have called them wad woes or something else so i started to look in the folklore for these women in white and going back in time i found this uh woman from germany she's a they said she was the teutonic moon goddess but uh she's really a lot more like Baba Yaga, the, the witch from Russian folklore, and her name is Perkta. And the interesting thing about Perkta is she would call children from the wilderness. She says she was very interested in children, just like Bigfoot reports. If they followed her, they'd never come back. You know, so she'd lead them into the woods, they'd never come back. She was said to be an old hag woman who either wore white or she could appear also as a, a young woman in white. They said Perkta had either one or two feet that were too big for her body. Now, if you remember the, the woman from the Two Brothers episode, they said she was wearing shoes that looked like clown shoes, like too big for her. And the reason this perk to wore that uh, or had the big feet, they said, is because she had bird feet. Now, this is very, and this is something that Josh pointed out to me. If there's a problem in the Bigfoot community with three, <laughs> three, three-toed tracks, a lot of people say, well, it doesn't make sense. A primate shouldn't have three-toed tracks, etc." But if you think of a bird foot, what it would look like, now they actually have four toes, but the fourth toe is, is facing backwards. The appearance of a bird's track is as three toes. And that was part of my interview with uh, Timothy Renner and Josh Cutchins. I hope you guys enjoy it. There is a lot of nuggets in there, a lot of little information to gather from that interview. There's a method to my madness. No, I'm not burnt out. No, I'm not tired of talking about Bigfoot but I'm looking for the truth. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight. We're going to be talking to Scott, and Scott's actually a truck driver. He was driving through Pennsylvania, and he saw a creature. He thought it was a bear, so he pulled over to take a look. And he wasn't the only witness that pulled over to look at this creature. It turned out not to be a bear. A very fascinating account. Actually, if you hear a lot of the behavior Scott talks about, it reminds me of uh, Claire's encounter. You know, the lady in the intro uh, that from England that was in California that ran into a creature. Uh, if you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Uh, let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome uh, Scott to the show. Scott, thanks for coming on. Hey, how you doing there, buddy? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for being here. And I know you had quite the encounter there in uh, Pennsylvania. If you would, kind of just kind of start from the beginning. Tell us what you were doing and uh, what happened. What did you see? Okay, sure, definitely. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you, uh, you know, for allowing me to, to join this platform. I mean, it means a lot. I've been going through quite a bit these past 
few days and uh you know upon talking to you i felt so much better i think i got more sleep last night than i've ha- had in the past week so i want to thank you first and foremost <laughs> i appreciate that <laughs> um well i'm um excuse me i'm a uh, 51 years old um you know i currently live in uh, maryland i've been driving tractor trailer and uh you know trucks i've had my cdl license now for the past 10 15 years and <clears throat> excuse me i used to be over the road i used to work with schneider uh which is a you know a, a trucking company and i was uh, i was out on the road maybe a month month and a half and then i would come back and spend time with my parents and you know that got kind of old after a while you know the older my parents you know were were getting the more i wanted to be close to them to to help so i basically came back to maryland and got a local job, which is where I am now. Um, and it's a local uh, produce and seafood company out of Jessup, Maryland. I've been working there now for the past probably year and a half. And uh, what we're responsible for doing is uh, delivering produce and seafood and, and and various items to different grocery stores and uh, mom and pop stores. One of the stores that we actually delivered to was uh, a place well known in Pennsylvania. It's like a Rudders Rudders store is the name of it. Rudders. Um, it's kind of like your Wawa or 7-Eleven. You know, it sells different items. Of course, it sells uh, you know the items that we bring in, which is the fresh fruits and vegetables. Well, because of the COVID, you know, this madness, COVID virus that's going on, we were no longer allowed to deliver to the actual store. So we had to deliver to, um, it's a distribution, a big distribution center, um, and that's in York, PA, uh, which brings me fast forward to where, you know, to the event. I had a delivery at the uh, Rudders Distribution in uh, York, PA. And uh, excuse me, I kind of wrote this stuff down so I wouldn't forget, you know, where I was and times and so forth. Um, it was approximately 9, 9.35 uh, Tuesday on the 21st i believe that was the day the 21st um and again i was coming from jessup maryland on my way to york pa i was traveling on the road it's called farm trail road which it says here is route 38 it's kind of a country farmish type road you know you see the trees you see the you know the different animals (laughs) and so forth and so on well um as i was driving on 238 i was coming up on this bridge and again, I'm just looking, you know, I'm looking to the left and the right, paying attention to what's in front of me. And at the time, there really wasn't a lot of traffic that was traveling, you know, during this morning. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So as I was coming up on this bridge, I looked over to my right. And from a distance, all I saw was a, it, I would say that I thought it was a bear because again, it was just something black that was on the side of the road and when i mean by side of the road if i was crossing as i was crossing over the bridge it was probably 35 25 30 to 35 yards out my first thought is oh my god look at this bear that's and i've never seen a bear in my life other than on television so i'm excited for that in general i'm like oh my god look at this thing and it was kind of the way it was was positioned, it had its back towards the bridge. So I couldn't make out any details other than it was something big and something black. My mindset is, well, it's got to be a bear. So what I did was, as I, as I crossed over the bridge, I stopped like 20 yards past the bridge. And I said, oh, my God, I've got to get out and see this. You know, I want to see what this is. You know, again, thinking it's a bear. Oh, silly me. I didn't think to grab my phone because I, I was so excited. I, I walked about 10 yards from the from the truck and I said, oh, well, let me go back and get my phone. And then I thought, well, Wes, you know what? If I go here, it might it might disappear. So at least I'll get to see it. So I kept going and I walked up on the bridge. And as I got up on the bridge and I'm looking at this thing still with its back turned to me, another car, uh, another car pulled over. Of course, I, I won't give his name, but another gentleman had pulled over and he you know, I guess he was like right behind my truck on the side and he kind of starts trotting to me and says, Hey, did you see that? Did you see that? And I'm telling him it's right here. Look, it's right here. So as he comes up, we're standing side by side. He's on my left shoulder and we're both holding onto the rail, looking over the, uh, looking over the rail railing. And as we're looking at this thing, he starts to say, 
what is that kind of loud? And again, I'm not going to, not going to curse. You know, there were words you <laughs> curse words being used Yeah. and he's saying, what is that? What? Is, and I'm like, I, is that a bear? We're still trying to get, you know, how you kind of squint in to see if you're, you know, if your eyes are seeing what you, what you think you're seeing. We're both saying, what is that? When it, it turned first, it kind of, it was already squatted. And it kind of turned at, if you can imagine a clock, it kind of turned to one o'clock and his words get, uh, the gentleman's words were, that's no effing bear. And I think I tried to describe this to you when I spoke with you earlier, Wes, when you walk, it's almost like when you walk up on someone and they're caught and it's almost like, oh damn, you know, okay, you got me. That's what this thing's body language was as it started standing up. Now, again, even though the gentleman to my left is saying, that's, you know, that's no bear, that's no bear. I'm saying in my mind, it, it, what else could it be? It has to be a bear. This thing starts to stand. It stands up and I'm looking at its legs and I'm looking at its arms. Arms are huge. That's the first, his arms were huge. So he, as he starts to stand up, the bottom of his fingers never moved. And what I mean by that is if you squat down as a human being, once you start standing up, even as a bear, if you start standing up at some point in time, your hands are going to follow your arms, your hands are going to follow. This thing never did. It stayed right below his, like right near the kneecaps. When this thing stood up, it was absolutely massive. Never in my life have I ever seen something that big. It, I've never, and it was kind of a, kind of a whoa moment. Like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. I knew then it wasn't a bear, but in my mind, I can't think of anything else. I'm like, is this somebody playing jokes? Is this a guy in a suit? When it stood full tilt, when it stood up fully, I'm taking a guess, eight, eight and a half foot, massive shoulders. Shoulders look like they were about three and a half, maybe four feet across. I mean, just absolutely massive. And I noticed there was something in its in its left, in its left hand. What I initially thought may have been a dog, I believe, Wes, I believe it was a it was a goat. Because that's the only thing that was kind of again, it was a medium-sized animal. So if it wasn't a if it wasn't a goat, it was a dog. But I'm thinking more more along the lines of a goat. And its neck looked like it was broken. You know, it was definitely it was deceased. Um, as you're looking at the back of this thing, whatever this tall thing was, you can see it. The the, the goat in its left hand, his neck was covering his fingers. If that may, it's almost like his neck was broken. If I'm explaining that correctly, yeah, or if I'm describing it correctly. So anyway. This guy next to me, he's, I'm almost in shock. I'm kind of like, okay, what is this thing? You know, what is it going to do? The guy next to me, he starts to yell. You know, he's still saying the same, that's no effing bear. What the, that's no effing bear. When he said that, this thing turned again. Now, it, initially it was at like one o'clock. After it stood up, it turned to two o'clock. It looked at us in a freakish Wes, I can't even describe the movement of this. It was just a freakish look at us when it looked, when it looked back over its kind of like over its right shoulder, it gave a little, uh, like a huff. I can't do it. <laughs> you know, I can't make the sound that this thing made, but it was kind of like a, kind of like a bull, but just louder and more intense. And it turned, it turned towards us. With the thing still in its in its left hand, whatever that thing was, it balled up its fist, and it slammed it slammed its right fist on the ground into the water and the mud. And at that point, I think I told you, I think I told you uh, when I spoke with you before that there's no shame in me saying this, but I literally urinated on myself because I was not prepared for any of this. And when it did that, it completely scared me. I was absolutely shocked. I didn't know, okay, is this thing going to charge us? First of all, what is this thing? I knew that it definitely was not a bear. It was not an ape. The face 
was looking more, uh, I think I, I believe I sent you a, a, a photo of it because I tried to do a little research. It kind of resembled a Neanderthal, a Neanderthal man. The only difference is it was a lot more hair, a lot more hair on, on the head. It was kind of matted. Um, there was no smell. There was no, there was no sounds other than the, the hoofing of the, of the nose or whatever that grunt sound that it made. But the freakish thing was, you know, as we're sitting there looking at this thing, I'm in shock. You know, this guy next to me, he's going crazy. Once it put its fist into the ground, Wes, it, it squatted in a way that I think I explained to you before. I can't explain the movement of this thing. The only way I could describe it is if you were actually going to drop down and do, as a human, you're going to drop down and do push-ups and you take your left arm and your right arm and you put them out to the side and you put your legs as far out as you can, almost looking like an X, if that makes any <laughs> sense, or a sideways H. I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe the way this thing looked. It dropped down almost like a transformer. And I know that sounds crazy, but I can't think of anything else that this thing looked like. As it dropped down and began to look like a, a eight and a half, nine foot spider, this thing took off. I mean, with whatever this thing was tucked under its arm, it took off through the water through the woods, I at the right before that happened. I'm sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. Right before that happened, I'm trying to tell the guy, get your phone, get your phone. Use an explicit word. You get your phone. We need a picture. Get a picture. Get, get a picture. Get your phone. Just as he starts getting his phone, it was almost like this thing hurt us, <laughs> as if to say, okay, I've got to get out of here. And when it dropped west, this thing, the only way I could describe it is like a jet, uh, a cheetah on steroids. It took off and i've never seen anything that big move that fast never never have i ever seen anything like that which is why it kind of put me in a I, i'm trying to find the best i was just kind of stunned again your mind is not meant to see certain things in life and i honestly feel that was something that i wasn't meant to see that my body just wasn't prepared for my mind you know, my system, whatever you want to call it. So uh, fast forward to the time when it actually, it, I mean, it just bolted, it jetted. Uh, the gentleman next to me decides he wants to, uh, you know, call the police and let them know what was going on, let them know that there was something, you know, running loose out of here. We can't explain what it is, blah, blah, blah. But the funny thing is, instead of the, he called the county. Yeah, I, I guess it was the you know, York County police, you know, but they didn't come out. It was the state troop state trooper that came out and uh when the state trooper came out he got our inf you know he didn't get our information he got our you know it, what happened uh he uh he asked the other gentleman first you know what did you see you know can you describe it and then when he asked me i told him exactly you know what i saw and uh he was like well yeah you know we do have a lot of you know reported bears in this area and you, you know the other gentleman looked looked we looked at each other and we said that wasn't a bear i know what a bear looks like granted i've never seen one in in person up close but if you're going to tell me that bears have arms that are as long as uh, that go down to their calves i don't think so this thing was massive i've never even seen a bear on tv this big this thing was extremely massive and there was some moss i remember telling him just how big this thing was there was some moss on a tree uh, moss or whatever type of growth that was on a tree and i told him if you look at that growth that's how tall, that's how massive this thing was. And when he looked at it, he said, well, so you're telling me this thing was about eight. It looks like it's about nine foot tall. I said, it was about eight, eight and a half foot tall. And uh, he, I remember him taking his hat off and kind of wiping his brow. And the next thing he said was, oh, you guys aren't from around here, huh? And to me, that this didn't, that didn't fit to me. Again, I don't want to go to whole conspiracy theory. <laughs> that just didn't fit for him to, to, to say something. Like, what does that have to do with anything? Um, the gentleman that was with me was saying, well, I'm from Lancaster. He said, and I've been, I've been hunting since I was knee high to a grasshopper. He said, I've never in my life seen anything like that. He said, that was no effing bear. I want to ask you how far away. So you guys are kind of up on the roadway. How far away from you is this thing? Uh, maybe, maybe 30 yards. May it was close. 
It was close. Yeah, that's really you know, close. You know, one yes. of the things that's fascinating is how it slammed its fist to the ground. And I don't, I know you're kind of a new listener to the show, Claire. In the beginning, uh, she's the England, the one woman from uh, England that's talking, and her encounter happened in California. But she said wow, something okay. very similar. If you listen to that full account, um, okay, she talks about it slamming its fist to the ground, almost um, uh, like throwing a tantrum or um, yes. You know, well, why do you think in your situation it did that? Do you think it's because you guys were uh, the guy that you're with was saying it's no effing bear, it's no, you know, what do you think it kind of set it off? Well, if I could, I'm thinking, you know, there were a couple of things that kind of ran through my mind. Um, I was thinking that it was probably ticked off that we were actually there and it wasn't expecting us. So it almost, Again, if I go back a little bit, it almost seemed like it was playing the, if I'm still, as long as I stay still, <laughs> they won't see me. And I know that's not what it's thinking, but that's kind of the movement. And then again, when it stood up, it was like, oh God, okay, you caught me. And then it just said, well, you know what? Now I'm pissed. You know, they're there. They're not leaving. You know, they're not leaving me alone. Are they after my food? I, I mean, it was a lot of things that I thought about as to why it did what it did. But I think I would really have to go with it. Just, I think it was pissed based on the slam of the fist. And then that noise, that, that, that grunt or whatever that noise was the combination of that, I would say the thing was definitely pissed. Yeah. It's fascinating too, how they drop, you know, what, after my encounter, um, you know, one of the things I said during my, my encounter was, uh, that it collapsed almost like a uh, like a transformer really i mean they it's <laughs> exactly. so bizarre because you know if you and i get down on one get down to on all fours scott we we're going to put down one hand first kind of you know it, it's slow <laughs> yes. and it's clumsy but you know what i saw i mean you literally blink an eye and it's it's on all fours and they Absolutely. don't they don't move like gorillas on all fours and i remember i got so much crap for that when i me and my brother talked about that because all of these self-proclaimed experts go, well, they don't really move like that. They don't get down all fours like that. And I'm like, oh, I'm just telling you what I saw. <laughs> and since <laughs> right. doing the show, I hear a lot of eyewitnesses talk about that, how uh, it's like a spider. It's creepy to see them on all fours. It's very, it's not natural, in my opinion. No, it's definitely, it's definitely not natural. And those are the two analogies that I use. You know, one was the Transformers. And, you know, I actually have, I have a phobia you know, of spiders, you know, I had a, a tarantula thrown on me when I was a young teenager and I never really recuperated from that. So that was one of the first things, first little creepy things that just made me it's like, whoa, what? wait a minute. First of all, you're too big to be, do to be doing that type of a movement. And you're definitely too big to be, to be moving as fast as you did. Again, blink of an eye, blink of an eye, it dropped and another blink of an eye, it was gone. Like again, unnatural unnatural yeah very much and you know in your encounter um the picture you sent me it, it almost looks very human-like yes as, as opposed to like a great ape or you know a non-human primate yes yes i think the way i tried to describe it to you once before i had mentioned the movie um ice man it's an older movie with uh, timothy hutton he stars in it and it's uh basically about a a, a caveman who they found and thawed him out and to be honest with you, for the past few days before I spoke with you, that was the vision in my in my head. I couldn't sleep because that's that's what I would see. I would see that face on that body, and it just—I mean, we're talking no sleep, no sleep. I wasn't eating, you know. My digestive system was messed up, you know, and I just couldn't—I couldn't turn anyone, you know. I couldn't say, hey, you know, this is what's going on. I couldn't go to a doctor because of this whole COVID mess, so. It it's been it's been a rough it's been a rough few days. It, it really has, and I, and I still get visions of it at times. Um, again, I just got back to work. You know, I was off for a few days. I just couldn't. I didn't want to leave the house. I just didn't. You know, and uh, I used to fight. I've, I've been fighting with this. God, I really I really want to see one. You know, to, to kind of validate what I saw. I want to see another one, but then at the same time. I don't know if I want to see another one because I had such a hard time sleeping and eating after I saw this. So I'm kind of torn right now as to, you know, what I really want. 
Yeah, no, and I understand. And this happened so recent that it's going to stick with you for a while. Uh, did you get the impression it was male or female, or do you have an opinion on that? Um, I didn't see. Well, I would I would say it was a male, and the only reason I would say that is because if by some chance these things, you know, if this was a Sasquatch, if by some means they have uh, the females have breasts, I didn't see anything. I didn't see any breast. What I did see when it turned was. I think I described it to you at one point in time. It looked like someone had taken like two pillows, two or three pillows and stuffed them up under their shirt. That's how barreled this chest was. The chest was just, again, I've never seen anything this big. You know, this thing would put Andre the Giant to shame. It was, it was huge. It was muscular and it did not look happy that we were there. (laughs) Yeah. They generally don't look very happy, especially when they see you. Um, it makes you wonder what it was doing. Do you think it was sitting there? I, I know we're speculating right now, but do you think it was, was it drinking from the Creek or do you think it was sitting down to eat and then you guys showed up or do you think it was passing through kind of, what do you think it was doing by the time you guys stopped? I honestly think that it was, uh, whatever that thing was in its left hand, which I'm, we're going to say is a goat. I think he was washing the goat. That's just because again, the, the, the way it was just kind of sitting and kind of, I, I knew it was in the water. It just seemed like it was washing something. That's the visual that I got. And I'm like, well, what is this? What is this bear doing sitting like that? It looks kind of weird for a bear. Okay, let me turn around. Let me look at this. I That's what I think. I think it was uh, it was getting ready to eat, probably washing his food and got extremely ticked off. You know, <laughs> when it said, oh, God, you know. I'm trying to eat and hear these guys trying to disturb my meal or are they trying to take my food? Well, I'm going to show them. That's what I would think. And again, I'm, you know, what do I know? <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. I, I think perspective is important. And, you know, the best person to ask is you. You were there, you know. Uh, but he, I understand what you're saying. It's kind of hard to who knows what it was doing. Uh, but that is kind of fascinating. You know, it, with most animals or even um, humans, you know, you get in between their food uh, and they, and they get pissed, you know, and, and it's Absolutely. amazing how it didn't come after you guys, how it ended up just kind of running off and uh, didn't engage. It didn't actually come after you guys, you and that other gentleman that stopped. Yes. And I will say this, if it had of made any type of movement toward there would have been nothing we could have done. I mean, looking at the way that thing moved, if it had decided, you know what, not only do I want to go, but I want to get these two as well. <laughs> there wouldn't have been anything we could have done because I was, again, I was about 20 yards from my truck. He would have gotten me in my, probably on my fifth step. He would have had me. <laughs> so again, this, this thing was an absolute just beast. And I'm so glad it went the other way. I really, really am. I'm so glad it went the other way. Yeah, I understand that. I definitely understand that. Did you, when the cop left, did you get a chance to talk to the other guy that stopped? I mean, did he say, Hey, you know what that did he give you sort of any impression on what he thought it was? You know, I believe that he was probably just as shocked as I was. He was just talking more along the lines of how long he's been hunting and can you believe that? And what do you think it was? He never came out of his mouth and said, uh, Bigfoot Sasquatch. He did say monster. He said, we just, we just saw an effing monster. Uh, that was one of his favorite words, effing. But he was like, we just saw effing monster. Never said Sasquatch, never said Bigfoot. Again, it took me a while to kind of to kind of come to the grips of what else could this have possibly been? I mean, and again, maybe you can maybe you know of something else it could have possibly been, because if not, then I'm gonna say Sasquatch, period. Yeah, I think it was. You know, there there's a famous case, I, I want to say it was in Russia, um, around the turn of the century, and these Russian soldiers go up to this cave, and they have them in Russia. They call them the uh, Alma or Alma, Almasti. Uh, they have different names for them, kind of like how we do. And these, okay. So these Russian soldiers go up because they're trying to find, um, you know, rebel soldiers, uh, what we would call like terrorists today. Basically, they were trying to find them. And they got right. word they were up in this hill, hillside, up in these caves hiding. So the Russian military goes up to this cave, and um, as they're approaching the cave, they hear what sounds like somebody in the cave. So they start yelling for them to come out. 
because they think okay. that it's going to be these, you know, rebel soldiers they're going to ca- capture. And uh, what ends up coming out of the cave is pretty pretty much like with the picture you sent me. Um, oh. A lot of the Russian wow. soldiers said, and they blasted it. I mean, every one of them opened up on this thing. <laughs> of course. Um, but what they said, what a, it was a hairy Neanderthal. They wow. said it reminded them of a Neanderthal or a caveman or something to that effect. And they ended up shooting yes. this thing. And it amazes me when I first got into interviewing people, um, because in my mind, I thought we were looking for some sort of non-human primate or great ape or gorilla, right. that sort of thing. And right. what used to really throw me off in the beginning is when I would talk to people in the Northeast, in, in America, in the Northeast section of, of the United States, because what they would always say is they would describe them very similar to how you describe them. Uh, the uh-huh. body is basically a Sasquatch, but the face is not a non-human primate. Most people would say it was very human-like uh, in right. the face. And that always cons- you know, that always kind of bothered me a little bit. Um, that they would say that. But I've come to the conclusion there must be different types of these things because if you go down to, like, Texas, a lot of what they say is it looks like a chimp in the face. Like, um, right. it has a human nose, but it looks more like a chimpanzee. Um, and it's so bizarre, man. It's so bizarre. <laughs> I would imagine that, you know, it's going to bother you for a long time. I know you haven't been sleeping well, you know, as no, far I as... haven't. <laughs> and, and it's going to bother you for a long time, Um there's nothing really, there's no quick fix to it. Uh, it's just right. something that will eventually, I, I think the more you learn about it, the more it helps kind of get rid of some of that PTSD. Because it really is PTSD. I mean, you saw something that was not supposed to exist. and There you go. Exactly. You're face to face with it, you know. Oh, man. I will definitely say that I, I kind of looked, I went back and looked, I hope I'm saying this right, is that the Patterson-Gimlin film? Yeah. Yeah. Am I saying that correct? Yeah, I was looking at that uh, the other day and was saying, this thing is the complete opposite. You know, I can't tell the size of it on the, the, the black and white, but I know that the thing that I saw looked like a looked like a hairy bodybuilder uh, with, a, with a V-back. <laughs> That's the only way I could explain. And again, it looked completely different than that. But again, so I would say it, they would have to be different ones because they those look completely different you know yeah and most people to be honest with you scott most people say that uh after they have an encounter i used to ask all the time how would you compare it to the patterson gimlin film or what they call patty and most people would okay. say that what i saw did not look like the patterson gimlin creature at all uh, no what way. i saw was very different um based on what you saw what do you think that they are scott what's kind of your opinion as far as what these things are and there's no wrong answer of course because no one knows right okay um i would i would have to say it's probably a some form of a primate that hasn't been discovered i mean i know that sounds crazy but it's like i that's the only thing that would make sense to me you know i've tried to do a little bit of research on you know, like the, the Nephilim and, and then you, you you try to speak of UFOs and so forth and so on. This is the only thing that would make sense. This is something that just hasn't been discovered. Um, at some point in time, I think I, th- I think the government knows about this. I, I really do. I think the government knows a lot about this and they're just not saying too much because of the, uh, the, the, the panic that would go on. And then, you know, people getting their guns and going out there and acting crazy and looking for them. So that would be my guess. I just think it's a, a primate that just hasn't been discovered. Yeah, I sure hope you're right. I definitely hope you're right. It, <laughs> is this the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you, to you in your life, seeing this creature? Obvi- um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to put things in order because I have in my past, I have dabbled with, you know, with, with paranormal groups, you know, one out of Georgia and then, uh, there was a group out of uh, out of New Jersey, you know, Bellwood Paranormal. You know, I, I dabbled with them for a little while. So well, there were quite a few things that happened, but not to the extent of not to the extent of this. You know, the only thing I could possibly compare, maybe, is when I got uh, I got scratched up on an investigation. Um, I, I, again, I have I have pictures of all of that, and you know, the, the video, yeah, whatever tell, the case may be. Tell me about it. What happened? Where were you guys at? 
I wish I could remember the exact location. Um, I do know it was in it was in New Jersey. And uh, from what we understood, uh, I'll just give you the guy's uh, first name. His name was Fred. It was his it was his grandfather's home. It was like a uh, God, I'm trying to make sure I get all the, some of the details. It was like farmland. And from what we understood, there was a uh, there was a his granddaughter who I have to put the color in here so you'll understand what I'm saying. <laughs> The granddaughter, she was white, and she was seeing an, an African-American guy. And for some reason, whenever they would go into this barn, they were saying tools and stuff would be knocked off the wall, and they couldn't quite understand what was going on. So they actually called uh, Bellwood Paranormal, which is the group that I, I'm a member of. And when we went out there, we tried to get uh, basic information, you know, because the first thing you want to do is you want to try to debunk. You don't want to go someplace and say, oh, you know, this place is haunted. All this goes. The the group that I was a part of, we want to go there. We want to say, OK, what's going on? You know, give us a gist of, of, of what you've seen, you know, how you've been feeling, blah, blah, blah. So we would actually, um, you know, after we did the interviews and found out that the uh, the grandfather or the great grandfather was a slave owner. <laughs> so it became, okay, you start putting two and two together and you're like, oh, okay, well, maybe this is what it was. So naturally, you know, with me being African American, they're like, we're going to go into this barn and we're going to check out some things and we're going to see if anything happens. So, long story short, we go into this barn and we start, you know, just looking through through different things. And Wes, as I went up the stairs, I had a, another gentleman that was with me, and you know, we're just looking at different items. It felt as though I had a bee sting. That was the initial, you know, like, like, whoa, oh man, I got a, I got a bug or something on me. And then it happened again, and I said, what, whoa? And then right after the second time, it was just intense pain. It felt like fire, like I was being burned. And I said, oh my god. So I went to my knees, and the gentleman that was to my left. He grabs me. He calls for uh, the the founder of our group who was there. You know, his name is his name was Richard. He passed uh, a few months ago. You know, God rest his soul. But he started calling uh, Richard. Richard, hey, something's going on. So as they pulled me out, I said, "Well, what, something's on me, man. Something. Get my shirt off. Get this stuff off of here." When they took my shirt off, I had whelps. What we what looked like whip marks. And I know that sounds crazy, but again. I have the I have the pictures of it. It it felt like I was being stung, but in actuality, they had to be whip marks. That's the only thing that makes sense. And they're all over my back. And so, of course, once that happened, then we were all in 100% investigation mode. It's like, okay, get the cameras out. You know, let's let's sit down. Let's ask some questions. Blah blah blah. They actually had a news crew come out and uh, they, they interviewed me and they spoke with some of the other people that were there. So that's pretty much that in a nutshell. So if I would have to, that would be number two though. This, this Sasquatch sighting is number one beyond a shadow of a doubt without question. Yeah. That's terrifying, man. Did, how long did the, uh, the marks last? Did they go away when you left the place or was it something that had to heal? No, they had, they had to heal. They were, Probably, if I had to take a guess, probably about a week and a half to two weeks. You know, again, I'll make sure that I sit because I, I I save it to my phone. I mean, I definitely have that as a okay. I'm a I'm a believer. I was a believer before, but when something physically happens to you, it becomes oh okay well, okay. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say. I know what I felt. And I know what I have on my back, and I know that everyone who saw me in there walking, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna whip my own back. And they were fresh, fresh marks. That's terrifying, so, man. Gosh, that's yeah, terrifying. it was absolutely terrifying. It, it was, you know, it didn't stop me though. But again, if you're going into a, a paranormal hotspot, you expect certain things to happen, which is why I would have to rate that number two. If I'm driving a truck, I don't expect to see a nine foot creature on the side of the road holding a goat it's just not yeah. something my body was prepared for so that would definitely have to be my number one without question now i appreciate you sharing that man uh like i said that's terrifying do you with your job do you still do long distance or is it mainly just local and do you plan on doing 
any long distance hauling in the future? Um, I actually, well, I think what we're going to do, we're probably going to start up soon. You know, once, uh, once places start opening up, because I was doing uh, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, and there were times when I would do, you know, Pennsylvania. Uh, they cut down on a lot of that, you know, with a lot of places that were closing down. So probably in the next couple of weeks, the more places start open, mo- opening, the uh, more travel I'm actually going to have, both in the tractor trailer and the uh, the 26-footer. I hear you. Well, you have to let me know if anything else happens when you're out there driving around, you know. Uh, if you, it's definitely life changing. My heart goes out to you because no one's really <sighs> prepared to see one. Um, no. And I learned a long time ago, even some of these researchers and um, some of the self proclaimed experts that I'd be out with, uh, there was one guy, one ran across the trail in front of him. He, he came back white as a ghost. I couldn't believe that it <laughs> ran right in front of him, right across the trail, and he had a camera in his hand. Um, and so he could have filmed the whole thing, but wow. he was in such shock. <laughs> so I think even people who've seen him before and go out looking for them, it's still shocking to run into one. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, it's shocking to run into one, you know, because they're so Very. big, you just don't know what they're going to do. And then in your case, when you see how fast they can move, you're like, man, I could have blinked my eyes and the thing could have been on top of me and there would have been <laughs> nothing anyone could have done to stop it. You know what I mean? It, nothing. The truck would have been there and I would have been gone. So again, that was, uh, th- there was one thing I did forget to tell you, which is, uh, it's, I don't know, you take out of this what you want. Just yesterday, just yesterday, now keep in mind, I don't, you know, I'm not in trouble. I don't have any warrants. I don't have anything wrong. A state trooper came to my apartment in which I've only been here since the, since the 10th of this month, a state trooper came to my door, knocked on the door and I'm thinking, Oh my God, what's going on? Is everything okay? I opened the door and I said, uh, yes, sir. He says, your name is Scott. I said, yes, sir. Is everything okay? Wes, he just says, okay, we're just doing a welfare check to make sure everything is okay. And I said, what are you doing a welfare check? Did somebody call? He said, no, no, this is something we do, you know, on a regular, you know, every now and then we'll, we'll check because of the COVID. Do you know they didn't check anything else but my apartment? They didn't check anyone because I watched them and I'm thinking, why would he come here and ask, checking on my welfare? Do you think that's kind of weird or you just, I don't know. It just seemed weird to me. Yeah, it's a little strange, especially since you and I <laughs> talked yesterday. Um, exactly. But I, I think that there is a cover-up going on with these things. I don't think, you know, like in your situation, I don't think they're going to care that much. Um, the minute you have some form of evidence, uh, because no matter what you believe, what Sasquatch is, you know, some some people think he goes in and out of different dimensions. Some people uh-huh. think it's very physical. Some people... You know, and there is a little bit to some of those different theories. I mean, you could make an argument for just about any one of those those uh, theories, uh, right. but but they do leave a trace evidence when they are when people run into them. You know, whether that be footprints, hair, yes, um, yes. you know, the killing of animals, the uh, uh, breaking of trees, throwing of rocks. They they do right. leave a trace evidence of them being around. You know, and who knows what they are. Um, but I think a lot of times if you are able to collect some of that trace evidence or if you have blood samples or then they then I think you might end up getting a visit. But it is weird. I mean, don't get me wrong. It is bizarre. He it, would stop. It was by and, weird. Uh, I would have got him Just for profiling. Random. I'd be like, you profiled me. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't get it. You know what I mean? I would have nailed him for it because uh, it is weird. I mean, why doesn't he go check anyone else? You know what I mean? Why Why only yeah. check your apartment? That's that's weird. Yeah. It was about 30, maybe about 30, 40 minutes after, uh, after our conversation, it was just weird. And I'm like, um, what? And he's like, okay, well you have a good evening. I said, you too. And he went to his car and left the complex. I said, uh, oh, okay. I have no idea what that was about. None. Yeah. I'm not saying it was related. I'm just saying it was just weird that I get off the phone with you. And then it's like, boom. It is weird. It's weird. It is very, very weird. weird. Yeah. <laughs> Well, stay in touch with me, uh, Scott. Let me know if, if uh, you come across anything else or if you're out there driving, you know, and keep your head up. Uh, time does help, you know, after an encounter um, when time starts to go by. And the more you kind of look into it, the more it kind of evens it out. And you, I think once you accept that they are real, even though you saw them, 
you know, and, and you, <laughs> but there's always that moment after an encounter, even in yes. my own encounter where I thought, God, did I really see that? Did I dream that up? Did that, you know, <laughs> right. and, and it's so, you're so unsure of yourself because it's so weird. Uh, but time definitely helps with it. And if there's anything I can do for you, I mean, you have my cell phone number, feel free to hit me up anytime, man. Hey, man, I greatly, greatly appreciate this, Wes. And again, I don't mean to beat a dead horse. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, man, because I was starting to question my sanity. And, you know, it, it was almost like you're a fallen angel. I was like, you know what? I really, really appreciate this, man. You've give, given people a platform, you know, a non, non-judgmental platform to, to talk about their experiences, man. So love you, bro. And I really appreciate it. Really do. I appreciate the kind words. Thanks so much, Scott. And thanks so much for coming on and sharing your encounter. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Until next time, everyone.